This is the perfect one hour workshop if you're looking to bring a group of people together to define problems, generate and prioritize ideas, and then take action on solutions without discussion. It's called Lightning Decision Jam, and we're going to take you through it step by step. Oh yeah! Lightning Decision Jam is a crazy flexible workshop type that you can use for almost anything. If you need to bring a group of three people together, or if you need to bring a group of 75 people together and run a workshop for them, come up with solutions and actually have some outcomes, this is the perfect exercise to use. So in the example we're gonna show you today, the team that's coming together, they have some issues with the office environment, but everyone has something a little bit different so we couldn't come to any conclusions. So we're gonna use Lightning Decision Jam to actually solve that. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Or, or it won't be. It won't be boring. I think you'll like, it. you'll like it. You'll yeah. like it. You'll definitely like it. Let's show them how it works. Okay, so here are the supplies you're going to need to run Lightning Decision Jam all by your lonesome. The first thing you're going to need is rectangular yellow post-it. <laughs> the second thing you're going to need are square post-its in two different colors. We like blue. And, and pink. And pink. <laughs> The third thing is you're going to need some sticky dots and you're going to need two different colors of sticky dots. We like to have little red dots and big green dots. Little red, big green. We're going to need also some sharpies or whiteboard markers. You want to make sure they're actually kind of big and fat so people have to be very kind of clear and concise with their note taking. What are you saying there? What you're also going to need is a time timer or something to, to show people how much time is left. This is a bit expensive, so maybe don't throw it. <laughs> there you go, so it's a time timer. What's the last thing? The last thing is probably the most important thing. You're going to need a really nice playlist yeah. for, uh, for like deep thinking, uh, mm. concentrated, you know. And we have one. Uh, we'll also put that link down below. It's our own workshop Spotify playlist that is open to the public so that you can use it. I'm sorry. The perfect size for a group is around three to eight people, but you can have a giant room full of like 100 people. We've done this many times before, but just split those teams into teams of seven, eight, something like that. And this workshop is going to take anywhere from about one hour to an hour and a half, depending on how many people you have in the room. Okay, so the first step of Lightning Decision Jam is to choose a facilitator in the group. It doesn't need to be someone who's a professional facilitator, it just has to be one person who's selected and says, I'm going to facilitate this LDJ session. So they're going to actually like keep the time on all the exercises and explain how to do the exercises as well. So one of us should probably be the facilitator yeah, so we can so. show how that works in the in the B-roll. Yeah. Um, it probably should be me, right? I think maybe it should be me, okay. actually. Let's, so let's, um, we're going to okay, rock, let's paper, do, scissors, let's do one, one out of one. Okay. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Step one, the facilitator is going to draw a sailboat, yes a sailboat, on a whiteboard or a big piece of paper that's very visible to everybody in the room. And the idea behind the sailboat is that it's going to help us start this exercise in a way that doesn't need a lot of explanation. So what's the idea behind the sailboat? So you actually need to make sure your sailboat when you draw it has a sail and also has an anchor. So all the things that we're going to be coming up with are going to be positive things and negative things. So the sail is where you're going to put all the things that are pushing us forward as a sail does. Right. Sales do that. Sales do that, I think. And then the anchor is where we're going to put all the, the challenges that are holding us back, which is what an anchor does. It actually stops the boat from going forward. So now that the sailboat is up, we can start the first exercise that everyone's going to do together. The facilitator is going to ask everybody to take a block of blue post-its and a sharpie. And the facilitator is then going to ask everybody to work in silence for four minutes writing the things that are pushing this team forward. So the team we're looking at here is working together on a project and they're having a couple of problems, but one of their main problems that they brought up with this facilitator is we have problems with the office. So the facilitator is saying, okay, we're, we're talking about the office, what's actually pushing us forward? What are the good things? So everyone's gonna write the good things. One person on the team might write, there's lots of natural light, we have lots of big windows. Each good thing is written on a separate post-it, not everything on one post-it. And at the very end of the four minutes, when the timer goes off, each person is going to simply walk up to the sailboat, 
stick their individual post-its on. Maybe they'll have four, maybe they'll have five, maybe they'll have more good things. And they're going to say them to the rest of the team. So one of the participants is simply just going to walk up and say, there's lots of natural light in, the, in this office. I like that. So we're starting with the positive things. So there are two reasons why you're doing this. The first is that if you get people to start with the positives, it actually makes it a bit easier for them to come up with the corresponding negatives. And the second reason is that if you start people off by thinking about challenges and problems, it kind of creates a bit of like a negative atmosphere and you want people to think a little bit more positively so they're thinking about the solutions to challenges. So let's move on to step two. Okay, so step two is you're going to get everyone to start coming up with challenges or problems that they're facing. So you're gonna give the team four minutes, we're using blue post-its again, and you're gonna write one challenge per post-it. Get them to come up with basically as many as they can within the four minutes. And now you're gonna get the whole team to stand up and everybody's going to, at the same time, put up their post-it challenges actually on the anchor of the sailboat. So these are the things that are holding us back, remember. So we're putting them below the sailboat. Anchors hold boats back. Anchors actually stop boats from moving forward. Yeah, it stops. They don't move forward anymore when you have an anchor down. Now, this time we're not actually going to say the challenges aloud. And the reason for that is that you don't want to um, you know, draw attention to certain challenges some people are facing if others would maybe draw judgment because of that or something like that. You want to keep this as a very uh, level playing field. And this brings us to the most important principle behind Lightning Decision Jam and actually also behind the design sprint process which we talk about a lot on this channel as well and it's working together alone and the idea is that we're working towards a challenge together but we're not speaking and we're working on our own and it just kind of starts working because people don't have to discuss. Yeah, so in this type of challenge where we're talking about like an office environment some of the challenges uh, that are coming up are, um, you know, uh, it gets quite noisy in the office. Mm. It's because I work here. Because we have this <laughs> really <laughs> loud CEO that just comes in and just runs around screaming. Talking about my hair all the time. Okay, step three. What we're going to do now is prioritize problems. So what the facilitator is going to do is give each person on the team three dots and they get three minutes to silently vote on the problems that they subjectively feel are the biggest problems. Now, they're not gonna discuss, they're not gonna be like, oh, I wonder if this one is this one. And if they see a duplicate, just take that duplicate off and cover the other one. So don't discuss anything. You have three minutes, you have three votes. You can also vote on your own. You can put two dots on one. There are basically no voting rules besides do not discuss. So three dots, and we like to use the little red ones. Okay, so to finish up step three, all you're going to do as the facilitator is you're going to take all of the voted up post-its and arrange them in order of priority with the most voted one on the very top and you're creating like a little tree-like structure. Yeah, it, does, it, so, it might look like a weird tree. A weird it tree. might look like a pyramid sometimes. Branch in the don't, don't worry how it looks, okay? Yeah. All right, and now let's move on to step four. Okay, we're on to step four, and this is where the facilitator really, really comes in and has to use their brains. Mm -hmm. And step four is really reframing the problems, so the top voted problem, as a challenge. Now, one thing I want to say is, what if you have like three problems on the very top like layer, and, and you don't know which one is the one that you should take first? Classic. Just yeah, it's a classic. It's a classic. It all the time. Just take the one on the left. You can do the other ones later as well. So today we're just going to focus on one problem. We'll show you how to do the other ones later. We're going to take the top left problem or the top problem. And today that problem happens to be office is too loud. Office is too loud. That's a big problem. So most of the people in the room think that the office is too loud there's some consensus around that it's just a general vibe what we want to do right now is want to take this problem and we want to turn it into a challenge a positive challenge that we can create solutions for and how we're going to do that is that the facilitator is going to create a how might we a how might we is just a really basic way to rewrite problems as challenges that they're a little bit more broad and a little bit better for creating solutions. Let me show you how to do that. So the facilitator is going to write HMW on a rectangular post-it on the top left which means how might we and the facilitator is going to look at this office is too loud. What is the core of that problem? I'm, I'm going to rewrite that and in this case the facilitator decided to rewrite it as how might we accommodate people who need quiet in the office. So it's not as specific as, or it's not as kind of like, it's too loud in the office, it's 
how might we accommodate people who need quiet in the office? So it's a little bit more positive and it allows, it, it kind of leads us into creating different types of solutions. So you're gonna take three minutes to write this and there shouldn't be much discussion. The facilitator writes the how might we and then we move on to the next step. Step five is all about ideating without discussion. This is the best part. It really is, it really is. Too excited? No, it was really good. I okay. think it was just the right amount of, yeah. of excitement. So what you're gonna do is give the team five minutes and a block of pink post-its, and you're gonna get them to come up with as many solutions as they possibly can, one on each little post-it, uh, in that five minutes. And the solution, remember, the solutions they're coming up with are the solutions to the how might we so this is going to be a silent exercise again. You can turn on your trusty uh, workshop music if you'd like. But no one should be talking and everyone should really be focusing hard on coming up with as many solutions as possible. So what would be a few examples, if we were looking at how might we accommodate people who need quiet in the office, what would be a few examples of these solutions that people would be writing? Or, or ideas. Sometimes it's just ideas. Mm -hmm. Great question, Jonathan. I happen to have three right here. One is to get one of these noise cancelling phone booths. That would be an idea. That's an idea, not a bad idea either. Get everyone noise cancelling headphones. That would be an idea. That's an idea. And the last one is uh, to have quiet days. So let's say no sales calls on Tuesday and Thursday, for example. Oh! Not okay. a good idea. No, it's, it's a fine idea. So fine. the important thing here is that these sentences that are written down on these individual post-its are self-explanatory because you're not going to be able to present these back to the room. Everything's just gonna be stuck up like the previous exercise, so your participants need to really be clear what they are writing. Exactly. So the next thing we're gonna do is all the post-its, like last time, are gonna go up onto the wall. This shouldn't take more, longer than like 30 seconds to a minute because we're hours. literally just splodging. Yeah, stick them all up. Splodge. So it's the, same, it's the same idea and this keeps happening in this exercise where people write alone, they stick everything up alone, and then, like last time, they vote alone. Exactly. Alright, let's move on to step six, which is the voting and prioritizing. Pro voting and prioritizing. Very good. So let's see how many dots everybody gets this time, Jonathan. The moderator now gives each team member six dots and four minutes. We knew it, we just wanted to show this cute thing, yes. Okay, so everybody's gonna get six dots and four minutes to browse around, read all of the solutions. This actually does take, at least like this will take the full four minutes. And everyone is going to vote on the solutions that they think would best solve this how might we problem and it's subjective to themselves, right? You don't need to discuss, and once again, if you see a duplicate, just take it off and stick it on top of the other one. No discussion, just voting. You can put all your dots on one if you really like it. You can vote on your own, nobody knows because it's completely anonymous again. So, the next part of uh, step six is to... Just prioritize all of the solutions with the votes just like you did in the problem section. So you're going to have them in some sort of pyramid or just some sort of thing. And again, you can probably ignore the number ones. Like anything that has one vote or less, just ignore those. Don't Scratch bother those. adding them to the prioritized pile. And what you have now at this part of LDJ is the team has figured out what problems are most important to them. And they've also figured out which solutions seem to be the best possible solutions to move forward with. But what are we going to do with this giant pile of solutions? That's what we want to know. Do we, is it maybe part of the exercise? I think so. Okay, cool, let's move on. Let's move on to step number seven. Oh, there's nowhere to go. I'm back. This is step seven, and in step seven, we're gonna be figuring out which solutions from the prioritized pile of solutions are gonna be the best solutions to execute on. Which ones should we actually try out? So step one is very simple. We're gonna draw an effort impact scale. It's very, very simple. It's a graph with impact on the Y scale and effort on the X scale. Impact is basically how much of an impact and how successful do we think that this solution will be based on our how might we challenge. And the effort is how long is it gonna take? How expensive is it gonna be? And we're gonna be trying to get a general idea of what this might look like for all of these ideas so we can decide which ones are we gonna execute on. Now, effort impact scales are something you might have seen if you work at any companies like McKinsey or any of these consulting firms. We're taking it out, simplifying it, and using it to make decisions. So this kind of seems like it's gonna be a little bit of a complicated process, right? Like I'm imagining a lot of discussion going on, a lot of back and forth, a lot of arguing. 
how will we mitigate it, Jonathan? We're going to mitigate it by using simple facilitation techniques of telling people to shut the f So, Brittany, you're right. We're going to have to get all of these post-its on the effort impact scale. And without discussion, that's going to be pretty tricky because some people are going to be like, oh, I think this is going to work. Some people are going to be like, oh, it's going to be this difficult. But people are not going to necessarily agree. Mm -hmm. But we just want a general idea. This doesn't need to be accurate. So what we're going to do is that the facilitator is going to act as a very, very strict guide through the process. So how that's going to work is the facilitator is going to take, starting from the very top in terms of priority, it's going to take the first post it with the most votes and start at the center of the effort impact scale and simply put it in the middle of the graph and ask the participants higher or lower impact so all they're gonna say is higher or lower and then the facilitator is simply moving this post-it up and down the effort impact scale until there seems to be a general consensus and the facilitator really needs to say it's not important that we get this right it's just important that we get them on at first so as long as you have the first post-it on there it sort of acts as the anchor so everything else is relative to this post-it and yeah. it makes it a lot lot easier so the team has 10 minutes in total to get all of these solution post-its onto the effort impact scale but don't worry if you don't get them all on by the end of it, you just need the important ones. And at the end, you have something that looks like this, which is essentially an effort impact scale with a lot of solutions on it. And you might be wondering, what do we do next? What do we do now? So now you're gonna decide on the one solution to test, to move forward with, basically. And how we do this is you're gonna take the one solution that is closest to the top and closest to the left. So the farthest top leftist. So that's going to be the solution that we're going to actually move forward with and turn it into an experiment. So let's take one of those and let's move on to the final step, which is actually making this actionable. Hey! So now we're moving on to the final step in the LVJ. Good work if you've gotten this far in the video. And if you've enjoyed it so far, give it a like, maybe subscribe, maybe leave a comment. That actually helps more people find it. And we're just like hanging in this room alone right now, yeah. making this video. So it always helps our ego. If you leave a comment, give it a like, give it a share. Give yeah. it a share. Give it a, give it a friggin' share, why Jesus. don't you? All right, let's move right along. So the, the final step is a short one. It only takes five minutes. And what you're gonna do is take that sweet spot solution, which in ours was buy everyone noise canceling headphones. That was the winning solution, very cool. So what we're gonna do now is make sure that we don't just pull the solution and it then flutters off into, you know, never, never land and no one ever hears or sees of it ever again. You're gonna create actionable steps in order to really make sure that this experiment happens. And you're not just gonna create actionable steps, you're going to have someone take responsibility for taking these steps as well. Very true, John, very good point. So what we're gonna do is the first step is going to be to buy three pairs of noise canceling headphones. And then you're going to, the second step will be give these people these noise canceling headphones. So when they arrive, hopefully you've ordered on Prime, uh, and they'll arrive the next day and we both did a week at different times. The third step is that you're going to then, after two weeks, check in with these three people and ask them if this actually helped solve this problem. So within this meeting, we're also going to set a calendar invite so that we really meet these people again and we really talk to them about, did using these noise cancelling headphones get rid of the noise in the office problem for you? And if it didn't, then we take the next solution, right? We try out the next experiment in the top left pile and we're slowly working our way to the right. So we're trying to try the easy solutions first to see if they work. In this case, this is a real case study that we're showing you, that was actually the solution. There was a couple of people in the company, maybe like 15% who really didn't like working in a loud office, office environment. And instead of rebuilding the entire place or buying phone booths or all of this other stuff, we bought them some kind of expensive noise canceling headphones, which was a lot less money than rebuilding. And the complaints completely stopped. Yeah, and now it's part of our on onboarding process that everybody gets a set of noise cancelling headphones when they start working at AJ and Smart, just so that they can block out the noise of John. Blah, 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 blah. So in the space of about one hour, what you've been able to do with your team is go from a broad set of challenges and ideas to actually having an actionable solution and experiment without very much discussion. Let's do a quick recap of each exercise just to remind you of what actually happened. So the first thing we did was we thought of all the nice, positive, warm, fuzzy things that 
we could think of. The second thing was looking at the biggest negative challenges as a group, but not discussing, sticking them up, and then actually just voting them up so we can see which ones are actually the most important for the group. And then what we did was we reframed the, uh, the problems and challenges into how might we's. We didn't do that for too many, we just did that for the one. So once we had the how might we, the entire team was able to work on coming up with solutions and ideas for this how might we. And basically, without discussing, we had a big pile of ideas, we were able to vote them up and see what the group thought were some interesting experiments to try out. Then we took the top load of solutions and put them on an effort impact scale without discussing. That's really great because once we were able to get them on the effort impact scale, the entire team was able to have a look at where these solutions kind of sat in terms of how difficult it would be and how much they're likely to work. We are then able to just take something from the top left and turn it into an actionable experiment so that the meeting actually has an outcome and doesn't just sort of fade off into the distance and become another meeting. Dancing, like the music. you know? Like yeah. the music. Okay, so thanks so much for watching this LDJ video. I really hope this helps you and your organization to make decisions faster. We've been using this in companies all over the world. We've seen some of the biggest brands using it and really having a lot of success with it. We hope you love it. And actually, just as a reminder, if you want the PDF of this for free, uh, there's a link right down there in the description on the YouTube page. If you're watching this somewhere else, just go to the YouTube page, there'll be a link there. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching this. Please give us a like, please leave a comment, please subscribe if you like this sort of thing share it just to be our marketing department that always helps us thanks so much for watching it goodbye thanks, thanks guys thank you goodbye now thanks for watching i'm back bye <laughs> <laughs>